Following the partition of India in 1947, the Sindhi community, a group of largely Hindu people originating from the Sindh region of Pakistan, migrated into the new Indian territory and settled down primarily in Maharashtra, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan. However, administrative records tell us that some found their way as far south as Bangalore and Mysore, with the census showing that 6,552 out of the 8,436 people entering into Karnataka at the time were from Sindh. Locals recalled refugees coming into their classes and localities, taking up jobs and setting up commercial establishments in various parts of the city. In order to house the refugees coming into Mysore state, the Sindhi colony in Cox town was founded. This documentary looks at the history of the Sindhi colony and contains some found memories of their residents, many of whom have lived in the locality all of their lives across many generations. We look at how the neighborhood became an integral part of the Bangalore city and how the Sindhi community flourished in South India despite the hardship which was the catalyst for their arrival. The Sindhis arrived in Bangalore having undertaken long and difficult journeys, often leaving behind all of their belongings and ancestral lands they had owned over generations. Here are two recollections of that time from Veena and Geeta Chatlani. Upon niche, upon niche, betha, by bathroom mein betha. By itna na full ho gaya tre. Mm-hmm. Hamara gala. Mm-hmm. Bas aaya, bas idhar hi kaam kaya. So kaam nahi hoya piche it. Hamara baap ho gaya, kaam kaya. Dara. काम किया खाना खाया और जगह पता नहीं हुआ हमको रहने के लिए तो हम मैंने मासी के घर में रहा एक रूम लेके मासी के घर में रहा पीछे भी अपना मकान लिया मासी यहीं पर थी अपना नहीं लिया मासी यहाँ पर ही थी हाँ मासी यहाँ रहती थी नहीं मासी भी आया हमारे साथ मासी भी आया उसका भाई उसका देवर का औरत होया इधर अच्छा मने ना नहीं होया तो वो जल्दी बैंगलोर आ गया मकान दिया अच्छा हाँ हमारे को मकान नहीं होया और एक महीना हम उधर ऐसा ऐसा करके बैठा एक रूम होया उसको भी एक रूम होया पर ऐसा ऐसा क्या करना मकान में लेना मकान में ना हो जाना तो आप पार्टीशन के बाद आए हाँ पार्टीशन के बाद आए पार्टीशन हो गया था नहीं नहीं पाकिस्तान हो गया था हो गया था तो वहाँ उन्होंने मारना शुरू कर दरवाज़ा थोड़ी छोड़ दा मारना शुरू कर दिया था हाँ मारना खून लगा वो देला उसका दुकान लूटना सब हो गया ना आपने कुछ देखा हाँ आपने कुछ देखा वहाँ मारते हुए आपके सामने हुआ आपके सामने किसी को मारा नहीं नहीं अच्छा हमारा दो खाली अब तीन बहन होया हमारा माँ बाप होया नहीं भाई अब जल्दी आ गया जल्दी आया इसलिए मार जाने कुछ में दुख नहीं पर सब छोड़ के आया ना काम होया काम होया हमारा हम तो छोटा होया पर बाप का होया काम छोड़ के अबे इधर आके थोड़ा कहाँ पर ही so my daddy said that when they left, there was a Muslim guy who used to keep a dagger on his pillow to help them go safely out of the country. After that, they all went to Alaba. So we went to Alaba. All the children suffered due to heat. Very hot it used to be that time. So my uncle, my father was, I don't know where my father was, but I, I was told that my uncle went to Madras. He went to some other places also, but it was very hot everywhere. Finally, he came to Bangalore, and Bangalore he found very pleasant. In like August, September, October like that, it's very pleasant. See now, in, even in June, it's very pleasant here now. But those days, it was very pleasant. It was called the Garden City. Okay, there was no, not much traffic, no traffic at all. In fact, public were very less. There were only cycles 
and hand-drawn uh, cycle rickshaws and uh, one or two buses or one or two cars only we could see, no autos, no scooters. In order to effectively help all of the refugees arriving, the government set up a system whereby they nominated a prominent member of the community who was a Bangalore resident to record and help settle the new arrivals. Dhiren Gopal's grandfather, Ram Narayan Chelaram, was one such man. He shares the family lore surrounding this process. So when the partition happened, Two, three years before the partition, grandmom settled back to India. Dad was very young and went to college here. My uncles and everybody went to college here. Uh, we had eminent classmates like Dr. Makri, Makri Circle. Dr. Makri was an eye surgeon in Bangalore. We were so very old Bangalore family. So very, you know, we have very few eminent families, right? So having said that, uh, so when the partition happened, granddad, Ramnar and Chalaram, my grandfather was requested by the government to maintain a kind of a ledger or a, 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 a record of who's coming in from which part of, of Sindh, of Pakistan. Sindhi to Sindhi, if they were Punjabis, they were into a Punjabi gentleman. So each one was given that pocket of, of uh, you know, you go beat up because, you know, you had that oneness because they were all refugees. They left everything. So they wanted to have somebody from the same community within within uh, uh, within within the religion I mean, within the sex that we followed like the Punjabis would have went to a Punjabi gentleman in Delhi I know the family the Ahuja family and for the Sindhis who came to Bangalore it was my grandfather so when they came into Bangalore he used to maintain there was an influx of people right and in 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 Sindh also we have two sects one is us which I call Shikarpur where the Shikarpuris were from that Sindhis had two sects, actually four sects. Uh, one is the Hyderabadis who were traders, right? Shikarpuris were traditionally bankers. That means money lending. Then you had the Amils who were extremely um, educated and still are, government jobs and posts like that. And one is the Bhai Bads, which I don't know much about, but these three communities I know very well. So the Hyderabadi Sindhis and the other Sindhis who came to Bangalore all reported to my grandfather and he used to have a ledger. I, until the 80s, we used to have that book also I, in his own handwriting. But when we moved homes, I don't know where it went. I wish I had kept it. So when he used, to, he used to maintain the ledgers and then he used to tell the government that these people have come in because they had to have a census. You must understand, this was all done for a census. How do they know how many people have moved? How many people have moved out? They had to have some kind of a number. Because they needed to build barracks. They needed to give food. Because some of them couldn't even afford that, right? Everything was left and coming in, right? So barracks were built. I still remember seeing pictures of those. Very grainy black and white pictures. I remember my grandmom had them. And she said, we, we used to go here every day. You know, in Central College grounds, there was a ground in, in, in town called Central College grounds. Gas College and Central College, which is an old cricket stadium. That was where the barracks were. People were put in with, amongst their own community because there was some sort of a security feeling that they got, right? Or it's, okay, he's talking Sindhi, so I know him. He's, if you're talking Punjabi, you know, that kind of a unknown land, no money, nobody. We don't know what's your, what's your future. So it was a very uncertain time. So they felt putting them according to their communities would probably help, which is a very sensible way of doing things, if you ask me. In order to house the refugees, land was necessary. So in 1948-49, the Sindhi Cooperative Housing Society was founded to take up the land and housing needs of the newly arrived Sindhi community. The Sindhi colony was in an area of Bangalore which was part of the cantonment area, Cockstown. The area's history means that roads which ran through the Sindhi colony have names denoting colonial origins. These include Kensington Road, Promenade Road, Asai Road and Wheeler's Road. Cox Town itself is named after Mr. A. R. Cox, the penultimate magistrate and district collector of the civil and military station. Miani Avenue Road gets its name from the Battle of Miani, 
which was fought in 1843 in Sindh between the Baluch army of Talpur Ahmeds and the British East India Company. The layout of the colony was planned and members were given sites of 30 by 40 square feet for rupees 1000, a subsidized rate. Houses were constructed with the help of a loan sanctioned by the government at 4% per annum for a period of 30 years. The arrangement was originally on a shareholding basis but around 1992-93 the properties were registered under the individual's name due to the introduction of a law which made this necessary. Before becoming the Sindhi colony the property had multiple owners. Mr Ramaswamy was one of them and Dr Lakshman tells us about how his father came to own a plot of land inside Sindhi colony in a separate section known as Ramaswamy layout My father bought a plot in Sindhi colony probably about 70 years ago that part of Sindhi colony was actually a graveyard which had been converted into a, a residential colony so the joke in my family is that my father had bought a plot in the graveyard the owner of the colony uh, of the residential colony was my father's patient and um, the system those days dictated that the person who bought the, the first plot uh, should be a brahmin so this man was very fond of my father he was his patient so he came along one day to my father's clinic and said give me a silver 1 rupee coin so my father handed it over and he said now you have bought a plot we are going to register the plot in your name my dad panicked and said no 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 i cannot afford this plot don't do this to me i will, you know i'm not going to do it he said we are not asking you for the money the rule says this so you have paid us 1 rupee the rest of the money depends on you so that's how my fa- father bought the plot in the graveyard actually the area is not in the colony one third is ramaswami layout the person i mentioned the owner so it was named after him two thirds was sold by i think sold by him to the government because the sindhis fled from pakistan at the time of partition so they came to india as refugees and the government gave them that section to live in because they were refugees and they needed housing but then many years later the bus stop turned up there and for whatever reason the bus stop uh, was called the sindhi colony bus stop and willy nilly all of us became sindhis ramaswami layout was just forgotten part of the land was a dairy farm remembered by many people in the colony and which was owned by the koilo family frank koilo recollects how his family came in the sindhi colony and i come from a family of 13 siblings we are basically uh, uh, from south canada whom my parents and grandparents had settled in bangalore many many years ago one of the pioneer manglorian families to have settled in bangalore and i i am ranked number 7 in the family i have eight brothers and five sisters and we have all our time spent i have spent all my time in bangalore except for a few few years away and now married and settled down here we were a family of, of 13 siblings my father and mother were away in africa and later on in the year 1930 31 they both decided to return from africa and settle down in bangalore where i had my maternal grand- grandparents living in freyatha town area on returning to bangalore they decided to buy a dairy farm when we were all much before i, I was born and it was called berkeley dairy farm just before the second world war the farm the dairy farm was situated on macrath road and they purchased it from an american and a german 
who were about to go back to their native places due, before the Second World War. On buying the farm comprising of about 200 cows and equipment, my parents then decided to shift it to Five Wheeler Road, which, is, which was called the Kavala House. It was a property owned, I mean, owned by a Mudliya from Madras, and it comprised of about roughly five acres of land with a huge bungalow. So we were told that it was an old officer's mess called Kavala House, since it had horse stables. This colony contains 120 houses, a Guru Mandir and a Sindhi social hall where festivals like Holi and Guru Nanak Jayanti and celebrations like marriages were and are still conducted. Other landmarks in the Sindhi colony are the Bengali Association founded in 1959 which was originally a public library called Bharati Patnagar. Lakeside Medical Hospital, Bangalore's first pediatric hospital and the oldest semi-cooperate hospital founded by Dr. H. Paramesh in 1979. A steward tank brought to Bangalore by MEG from North Africa during World War II and Shankar Bale House which has been selling chart on Wheeler's Road in the Sindhi colony since 1980. Other long-standing landmarks around the neighbourhood are Tom's Bakery, St. John's Church, St. Aloysius School, Alsur Lake, St. Joseph's Convent Girls High School and Pre-University College for Girls and the Alsur Gurudwara. One area very close to Sindhi Colony that is remembered fondly by its residents is the Indian Gymkhana a social club established in 1932 during the British Raj. It was a wide open ground used by local children for playing cricket, hockey and football. Next to the colony, there is a cricket ground, which is known as the Indian Jumkana ground. Uh, in its heyday, a superb cricket ground, second only to the then number one cricket ground in Bangalore, the Central College ground. Lovely ground with a tennis court to boot. The British, when they did things, did them extremely well to give the devil its due. When we spoke to current and former residents of Sindhi colony, everyone had fond memories to share of childhood spent playing in the quiet green roads of the neighbourhood. Here are a few of those recollections. Uh, I mean, many of us used to go there with our friends and, you know, play in the grounds. But a lot of fun and, and games used to happen in the colony on the crossroads. Nothing to worry about. Just go be with your friends, you know. And uh, those were the days that we were not cooped up in the house with our mobile phones. Yes. Um, we, we had a leopard <laughs> that trailed into our house when oh. we were running the dairy farm. We were all young and then it happened in the late 40s. And uh, my father and mother used to go down to the dairy. There was a corridor leading from the main house to the dairy, which is under. And we had a dog that kept barking that particular night. And my father took out his torch and he flashed the torch and he sees two eyes in the, in, on the, on the, at one side. Then it waited till the day was dawning. And when the sun got bright, he saw this animal. Immediately, we phoned up the Fraserton police station and then they came. In the meantime, this animal went down, which is, which was, we had a stormwater drain, which is now the Stella studio. That drain was within the property, you see, stormwater drain. And for that, it, gone, it, had, it, uh, it had gone away. Then my father was rather ambitious. He wanted to set a trap for the for this leopard. So he set up a trap and took us out in the night to show us with a hurricane lantern what he has done and tried to trap this leopard. And he kept a small little pup. A dog, our dog had a litter, so the, he took a small pup and kept it in a trap, trying to bait this leopard. It did come that night, it rained, but there were the paw marks of the leopard. We didn't see it though. A few days later, it was shot down on Stevens Road by some an anglo Indian family called the Ainscos. That's all we were told in those days, you see, we were young. When remembering childhoods and early adulthood, 
food and drink play a huge role in our memories. We asked several people about notable landmarks in Sindhi colony and there was one place which came up time and again, the Sharda Lunch Home, which is now South Inn. Apart from the uh, Sindhi community's landmark, at the edge entrance of the Sindhi colony, we had the famous Sharda Lunch Home, where it was a place where everybody used to just come, enter, have a cup of tea, talk to one another. The place called Sharda Lunch Home, which is still very popular among all the Sindhis worldwide. This hotel, um, I have drunk 30,000 cups of coffee in. And even cake became a way for Sindhi families to stay connected, even while their fathers were working overseas. It was very traditional those days, especially uh, I remember many of the Sindhi um, uh, friends and family around the colony and even others in general, they used to bring their little children with a birthday cake, make them stand in front of the cake, take a picture. That was a must for many, many uh, families in the colony. They had to bring the because uh, like uh, the, uh, mother and the children would be in Bangalore, father would be in Hong Kong or Singapore or somewhere in a foreign country. And it was a must for the mother to pick up a cake from Tom's Cafe or, or, and bring it and come and uh, make the child stand. We put a stool, put the cake there and the child stands with a knife. And that photo along with mother, two photos had to be sent to their uh, uh, father who was abroad. So this is something that, you know, uh, happened for many, many, many years until the cell phone, uh, you know, came and things have now changed. Beyond this, Sindhi delicacies became favourites of everyone living in the colony, as Stella fondly remembers. Festivals and the Guru Mandir played a huge role in the Sindhi community, both in daily life and during special occasions. We would all celebrate on the road. I mean, we were all, uh, all the friends would get together for Diwali and then, you know, we would have these uh, thing called rocket fights. Uh, you know, rockets, you normally leave them on, uh, you know, you uh, think. But we, we would stand few guys one end of the road and the other on the other end. And we used to send the rockets to each other, you know. So that was kind of a rocket fight which we used to do. And burn a lot of crackers and enjoy all our festivals. Which, I mean, doesn't happen now. <laughs> Technology has changed everything. The uh, Mandir, that was a place where almost every day they'll have some event or some bhajans. But okay. I don't normally go, but I see them going every evening. They are a, like a very pious community, all in white. You'd see groups of them passing in white, going around. It is very lovely to see that. Even now it exists, but not to that extent what was 25, 30 years ago. non sindhis were also involved in the temple as Dr. Lakshman remembers. They all came as the refugees. They were all living there. And they had what is known as the Nari Shala, which is a sort of community setup. And we would regularly uh, be uh, go there and be invited for their, their Hindu religious uh, festivals, especially my mom. My mom used to go there and be asked to sing because she was a good singer. She would sing the bhajans and things like that. And we would sit around and listen. Uh, this is all part of uh, uh, my being a very committed Hindu today, because we grew up in that atmosphere. And Sindhis would attend the festivals of religious celebrations of their friends. During Christmas time, many of them will visit a church. During a Bengali festival, they will go to the Bengali Association partake in their activities, their uh, festivity and their uh, many cultural events. Then uh, also uh, we used to have a community hall at the edge. Now the whole building has come down. Uh, earlier, earlier, like 30, 40 years ago, many events used to take place there. And uh, uh, like where anything that happens around that vicinity, you'll see the whole community coming forward and, uh, you know, participating. Beyond this, celebration was a way to bring the community together. Neeta tells us more about growing up with festivals forming a high point in the year of a child in the colony. 
and the whole family getting involved in creating elaborate theater and skits for the community uh, i think the reason people meet is over food culture song dance music and celebration so a large part of my memories are from gatherings uh, that we've had as a community over events or um, events such as you know, krishna jayanti shivratri diwali programs dasara programs and when i say programs i mean um, you know events that we we as as kids would put together which would involve some you know theater and song and dance and 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 we did that for years i think growing up as school children and even early young adults in college years uh, since my dad had had found a way to get the community together through this medium uh, it was it was interesting i think as kids we all found that we had talent which was untapped and that time of year would come where everyone would want to just participate in in anything that they found comfortable you know and, and theater was a large part of it uh, this is this is my dad lal budrani okay. we lost him several years ago but i think he leaves and has left a very strong uh, legacy behind which a lot of the folks in the colony started to take forward and and i think the goal or the objective that my dad always had was bringing people together bringing the community together as a group and when i say group is you know in in the colony we've had so many youngsters so many of my peers and you know the generations before and after that just came together to celebrate and 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 as a part of celebration these are all set I and mean, individual events they are fond memories of how to put costumes together from limited resources costumes for a diwali show costumes for a dasara show how would we celebrate guru nanak uh, jayanti or gur purab so these are really fond memories of of putting together these these celebrations these events and the rehearsals that would go before that you would have a script and you rehearse you know memorizing those lines those steps uh that dance sequence i mean there were just so many and this happened for years so it's difficult to point out one single memory because it's just a collection of so many this these was these were skits written from scratch just stories written from scratch uh mostly family oriented husband wife you know mother in law involved we had a lot of mother in law involved because there's always banter between daughter in law and mother in law so stories around that these play while bringing the community together had an added benefit to promote the use of sindhi language which was somewhat lost when the community left their native lands in sindh if you look at it on script is looks a lot like arabic because it's very similar and you start from right going into left and you open the book from right to left uh, so inherently it would seem like it's it's arabic but actually it has its own script uh, i think speaking of it now we never learned the language i mean like, to to read or write because it's it's fairly challenging it's got its own set of vowels consonants and a script in itself um and even then even back then when no one really knew the value of reading writing the language but at least the spoken word was something that we could all manage what is perhaps especially remarkable about the sindhi community in bangalore is the way that they have integrated across generations indeed according to maya jaypal author of bangalore story of a city What is noticeable about many of the communities which have been rooted here in the extent of their integration many families who were interviewed speak kannada among themselves corresponded in the language and have adopted the customs and traditions of their new homeland even while retaining some of their own lines of demarcation have become so blurred in the case of the third and fourth generation persons that even some called true bangaloreans have expressed the sentiment that is now difficult to distinguish the immigrants bangaloreans i mean they've always accepted the sindhi community 
I mean, I don't see any, I was born over here. So, you know, for me, it's like I'm uh, local over here. But we've never had any problems with anybody. Because we, don't, we, we mind our own business and we don't really get into any much way. The community hall is given to all communities. The widow house used to provide shelter and food for the women, old or young, who do not have a family or anybody to take care of them. The temple is not dedicated to one, just one deity. Along with the Guru Granth Sahib, one would get to see Shiv Parvati, Ganesh, Sherdi Sai Baba, Jule Lal, Vishnu, Lakshmi, Krishna, Radha, Ram, Lakshman, Sita and Hanuman. Sindhi Colony, while a historic area which in many ways have remained the same, with institutions like Stella Studio continuously present in the same place since 1958, as these photographs show, have changed in some ways. While the Sindhi Colony was founded because of the huge impact of partition, which forced thousands of Sindhi people to travel many miles to find a new home and abandon their motherland, it is a place of happiness, community and celebration. We leave this documentary with the words of Dr. Lakshman, which sums up the way that many people we interviewed seem to feel about this small plot of sloping land in the Bangalore cantonment area, which has become a home to so many generations. My heart will eternally be in Sindhi colony. It is a, uh, for me, a paradise in all. 